Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go over um, a damage system, um, which is going to link into our health bar that we have uh, in our HUD. So what I've done is I've made a very, very simple uh, set of spikes. You can get this in the Google Classroom under Unit 70. Uh, basically, we're going to use this when we walk into it. It's going to take health off us, but it's also going to force us back. Um, so uh, and disable input for a while as well. Um, so the first thing that you want to do is you want to get these spikes and drag and drop them in to Unreal 4. Now remember, in Unreal 4, make sure that you have all the elements that you've brought in, okay, imported in, in their separate folders. Now I haven't done it here, but you should do this yourself. So you have your own folder and then have sub subfolders uh, with whatever you're creating, blueprints, sprites, uh, characters, anything like that should be all contained in there. If you need to move anything, all you have to do is drag and drop it into it and you can move here. Don't copy, but move it. So I've got my sprites texture in here. I'm going to right click it and configure for retro sprites. Then right click it again. I'm going to create sprite. So here we go. We've got my sprite or my spike sprite. And then from that, I'm going to right click that. I'm going to create blueprint using and I'm going to make sure I save it in there. And instead of Spikes Sprite, I'm going to just call it Spikes BP for Blueprint. So this has opened up now my Blueprint. Uh, I'm not going to do anything in the graph just yet, uh, but I'm going to go to my Components section, and you can see I've got my Spikes in there. Uh, I'm going to add a box in here, so I'm just going to search for Box. And then I'm going to resize it. So it fits around the Spikes, something like that. Might make it just a bit bigger. Also for this tutorial, um, I'm just going to open up my character here. In a previous tutorial, we went over um, how to deplete our health using a function. So if you haven't done that already, I would suggest that you just go back and do and create that function because uh, the next part uh, you will not be able to add in. So back in our spikes BP, uh, what I want to do is whenever we touch that or that box that we added in, for that blueprint, it's going to call in this function. So again, if you haven't created this function inside your character, uh, you'll not be able to call upon it. So in Spikes BP, I'm going to go to my graph editor and I'm going to select my box over here on the left hand side. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to add event. And it's the second one down, add on component begin overlap. So when something overlaps with this, we're going to kick off a series of events. Um, I want it to be my character, so I'm going to have to get a cast to my character. Now I'm using 4.5.1, and the only way I can get that in this version is first of all right clicking and typing in character, so I get my player character. And from the return value, if I pull that out, I can get my cast to my character. You can see if I try and pull it out of this one and type in cast to, it's not going to be there. So once I've got that, I can delete my get player character and I can plug these two pins together and then I'm going to plug my other actor into the object. So when my character overlaps with the box it is going to, if I pull out from as my character, we're going to get that health deplete so it's going to just deplete my health. And that should work. So if I press play on that I need to bring in my sprite or my blueprint so another uh, thing you should note, uh, whenever you're drag and dropping in your sprite here, make sure it's the BP though. You'll know it's the BP because it'll have that box around it. And I'm just going to set that to zero. And drag it up. So if I press play now, you'll see my HUD. I'll start to lose some health. So that's working. So back into my character um, and into this health deplete function I want to start adding in a few other things now before you start this you might want to go back to your animation states enumerator in here we would have had idle walk run jump shoot uh, we want to add two new ones in which is hurt and dead so that we can call upon these vents whenever we're hurt and then eventually whenever we die so 
once we set our character, I'm going to get my animation states variable here. I'm going to pull that out and I'm going to set it. So what I want to do is I want to set that to hurt. I don't have a hurt animation yet, but once you make one, you'll be able to do that. So I'll set that to hurt. Uh, next thing I want to do is I want to pull this out and I'm going to disable input. And my player controller, I'm just going to type in player and use get player controller. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in a force. Now, again, 4.5.1. Uh, this is a bit awkward to get. Basically, you have to right click out here, type in add force and make sure you have context sensitive turned off and you'll see under character movement you've got add force and I'll plug that in and the target is going to be character I'll turn on context sensitive again it's going to be get character movement so it's going to add this force to my character movement um, we do want to split this pin here so we can work with these values individually so I'm going to right click it and split struct pin so what we want to focus on is our X and our Z. So that's our up and down, our Z and our X is left and right. Now we have to let Unreal 4 know when we're facing right or left. So we're going to have to create a variable which is going to be an integer. Uh, it's either going to be minus one or one. And basically if it's minus one, we're going to go left. And if it's uh, one, we're going to go right. So back to my event graph, you can see that there's a, a section called handle movement. So basically this top section is letting you know if you're going left and this here one is letting you know if you're going right. So if I make a new variable and I'll call it force direction and change that to an integer, what I can do is I can pull that out and I can set it and I'll just make a copy of that, control C, control V. So I'm going to set it to minus one here at the top and I'm going to send it to one at the bottom. So whenever it's making this rotation, it's going to set this force direction to minus one, and it's going to set it down here to uh, one when it's making this rotation, so left or right. Which means that whenever I'm multiplying this uh, force x, I can multiply it either by one or minus one, given as a negative or a positive number, letting Unreal 4 know if it's going right or left, basically. So what I want to do is I want to get that force direction, and I want to just get it. Again, this is either going to be minus one or one, depending on our direction. And I'm going to pull that out and I'm going to type in float. And you can see under float, you've got integer multiplied by float. And I'm going to plug that into X. So I'm going to multiply this by five million. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to make my Z also five million. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, you can play around with these if you wanted to. <clears throat> so after that add force, what we're going to do is we're going to update our animation so our animation knows that it should change to the hurt state. So I'm going to just type in update, update animation. Now the one thing is we don't want to have the hurt state stay there, so we want to have the ability to actually switch back to our idle state after maybe a second or something like that. Now I could pull out here and type in delay. And you can see I add in delay, but whenever I compile that, I'll get an error because you can't have a delay inside a function. So what we want to do is we want to go back to our event graph. And I'm just going to do this at the top. I'm going to right click and I'm going to just type in custom. Make sure context sensitive is on for this. And I'm going to get a custom event and I'm just going to call this set underscore idle. So with this here, I'm going to get my animation state, drag that out, and set. So we're going to call in this function what it's going to do. It's going to set our animation back to idle. And then, if you remember, in our health deplete, we've disabled input in this. So I'm going to enable input, and I'm going to update animation at the same time. So there we go. So it's set and idle again. It's enabled in our input and it's updating animation. So I'm just going to compile that. So after update animation in our health deplete function, we want to call upon 
that idle update. So I'm just going to type in idle and then we've got that set idle. So just to run through this again, <clears throat> whenever we walk over our object now, it's going to deplete our health. It's going to set uh, our health by minus five. It's going to turn our animation into a hurt. It's going to disable our input. It's going to force us back and upwards, okay, depending on the direction that we're facing using this force direction. It's going to update our animation and then it's going to call on this here a new set idle function. And if we go back to our event graph, the set idle function is going to set it back to idle, enable input, and update our animation. One thing I forgot to is add in a delay. So we want this to happen probably, you know, a second or less after. So we're going to be stuck on that hurt animation for a second. We're not going to be able to move our character for a second. And then it's going to go back into this idle animation. So if I compile and save that, and press play. If I walk into this now, you'll see that it's knocking my character up and down. Okay, and while I'm doing that, I can actually move it. So you can see he's stuck there. So he's knocking back there, and if I come in from the left, you'll see he's knocking him back in the other direction. Now obviously that's knocking him back a bit too far, so I can actually come in, and I could maybe turn this to four. Compile, press play, and then I could see how far it's not going to be back. So I could possibly change this here to four as well. I think it's not going to be too high. So then I can tweak these numbers depending on how far, how uh, little distance I want. <coughs> What we can do then is, um, later on, I'll show you how to add in uh, the animation for this hurt. Plus, we'll add in a death. Uh, so when that, when you actually get down to zero health, uh, we'll disable input again, uh, but we'll also play a hurt, um, or sorry, a death animation. And then later on, we'll add in another blueprint, which we'll call upon an end screen where you can restart the game or maybe load from the last checkpoint, that type of thing.